Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about something really awesome. We're going to be talking about how to use Figma tokens, the Figma tokens plugin, to actually bridge the gap between designers and developers. I'm going to show you how to set up all that interaction that's syncing with GitHub and actually show the value that's behind all of this stuff. But just before I actually go ahead and explain or do that or show you that, I have to first of all talk about the problem. A lot of the times us designers have a lot of styles in Figma, a bunch of stuff that we're doing. And then let's say we're updating those styles. And then we have, when we make those changes, we have to contact developers. We have to describe, let's say in Jira issues or Trello issues or board issues about all of the minute changes that we've been doing on the styles. Then they go ahead to their own uh, code base and then update all of those. And that's just like a lot of work, even for designers and obviously for developers as well. And then designers have to QA it and stuff along those lines. How do we bridge that? We can do that by Figma tokens. So I'm going to open Figma tokens, especially for developers who are looking at this video the first time. Figma tokens allows you to have all of the styles that you have on the right in Figma in, in a document. But even more than that, like a bunch of styles, like for example, in this video, I'm just going to be linking three styles so you can have a look at them. I don't necessarily want to have a bunch of styles linked, but you can have a bunch of these linked, like line height, letter spacing, font family, opacity, all of that stuff. Currently, I have these styles linked. So I have the size minus MD, which is 40. The height is 40. Um, the color is P300, as you can see on the right as well. And the border radius is four pixels. If I were to, let's say, update the border radius to something, let's say, like 50 pixels, that should go ahead and update this button as well. Right now it's finding and caching the tokens. Every, every time you first of all open this plugin, like it takes some time to do it, but then it, it runs fast. So it's gonna take some time initially. And now, as you can see, the border radius is updated. If I have to revert it, I can just go ahead and give it four pixel and that's gonna be much more immediate. So we have a bunch of these styles linked. Now, what do we have to do to actually push all of these styles to GitHub? Well, if we go to GitHub here, and try to add new credentials, it's gonna ask a bunch of things like name, personal access token, repository that you wanna to push to, the default branch that you have on that repository, the file path, so on and so forth. Let's just go ahead and actually do something here. So I'm gonna to go to, first of all, so in order to add a new credential, I have to give it a name. So let's see, this is my Figma, Figma tokens YouTube uh, credential. And this can be anything, this is just for yourself. Now we have to create a personal access token. In order to do so, you need to go to your GitHub file, uh, GitHub profile, you need to go to your settings. Then in your settings, you have to go to developer settings. In developer settings, you have this personal access token. You can generate a new token. I'm just gonna give this the same name, or never mind. I'm not gonna give it the same name because I wanna go ahead and show you that this doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna go ahead, give this the repo access, and let's say generate this token. Once we have this token generated, the token is generated here. I can copy it, I can give it here. Now we're gonna to go to our repository. Uh, we can obviously link it to an existing repository or we can create a new repository from scratch. I'm doing everything new so you, you guys can see it obviously. So Figma test, imagine that's the name of the repository and I'm just gonna go ahead and generate this. So here we have this repository created. Uh, it's also teaching me how to actually go ahead and add a new branch and stuff along those lines. So let's just go ahead and actually clone this repository first. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna say git. First of all, I'm gonna go into the folder in which I want this to be cloned. And then I'm gonna say git clone and just clone this particular repository. Once we have this repository cloned, obviously it's empty. So we need to fill it with something. I'm gonna open it in VS code. So that should open soon. And then I'm gonna go ahead and go create an index.html file. I'm gonna go ahead and have a HTML structure here, HTML, then we have a button inside of it, and then we have the body, sorry, HTML body, and then the button, let's just go ahead and say test button here. Also give a head tag here, head. Okay, so we have this basic stuff, basic HTML. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push this to our repository as the first commit. I'm gonna say git add, these files are now added. I'm gonna say git commit minus m first commit. And then I'm gonna say git push origin main to push these changes. So hopefully soon it's going to be pushed. And once it's pushed, if you just go to your GitHub repository and just refresh it, you would have your change here. So that's great. Now we need to copy the name of the user and then the repository. 
let's just go ahead and now add that now that that's created in actually our Figma tokens plugin. Then I'm going to say the branch is going to be main. You can obviously keep a separate branch as well. That's fine. And then you have to give a file path. I'm going to say I want to store it in a folder called tokens. And then we're going to have tokens.json as an example. Once you've done that, you can click on save. And that's how you go ahead and link it. Now, if I let's say just push these tokens, pushing tokens and push these to main, it's going to take some time to push them. Once these are pushed, these are going to automatically be pushed to the branch that I just linked them to. Um, so as you can see, it says all done. If it was in a separate branch, I could have created a pull request. But since I'm pushing it to the main branch, I don't necessarily need to do that. If I refresh, obviously, uh, I've gotten a server error for some reason. But now, as you can see, we have the pushing tokens commit here. I have the tokens file here. And I can easily just go to my VS code and say git pull origin main. Sorry, minor typo, git push origin main, git pull origin main, and that's gonna pull the changes from GitHub. And we're gonna have our tokens here. Apologies for my internet, is it is a bit slow nowadays. Um, so here, here we have all of the tokens. Now imagine if we have to use these tokens, what do we have to do? Well, first of all, we have to go and download or actually go to style dictionaries. So I'm going to go into something called style dictionaries. And that's actually going to allow us to convert these tokens into CSS variables that we can use. Um, as I mentioned, not extremely buggy, but so you guys have to bear me with that. Uh, okay, so here we have the style dictionary, I'm going to go and see how to get started. I don't want to go through the basic stuff. If you just go to the quick start, you can install it globally. And once you've installed it, you can just go ahead and start running it. You can just go ahead and do an init. And as you can see in the init, it generates a lot of these tokens files like the SCSS file, the Android, Compose, iOS, and all of that stuff. Since I'm just working on the HTML file, I don't necessarily have to go ahead and do all of that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy these tokens, this, config, this configuration file, and I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna create a config.json and paste these here. Once I have these pasted, let me just go ahead and actually zoom out a bit because this is really small. Once we have these pasted, I have to basically describe whether it's gonna be generated as a CSS file or an SCSS file. By default, it's SCSS, but I can change that to CSS if I want. I have to point out in which folder are the tokens stored. If they are in the tokens, that, that sounds good. And that's basically what you need to do. Now that you have that done, you can just go ahead and run the style dictionary. I can go here once, once you have it installed style dictionary and then build once you do that obviously maybe i made a typo let's just go ahead and see what we have style minus dictionary build i think that's the command for some reason it's not running let's just see why it's not running so it's saying it's copying the assets to the library it says let's just go ahead and try it again it's giving some error no such file or directory as assets uh, but as you can see, the tokens are generated. And let's just see if we have, I'm just going to delete this and let's try to generate it again. And as you can see, that works. So that works. That's pretty good. It's actually generating it into the CSS folder. And then we have the Android stuff. Never mind that. So here we have the variables. Now, if we have to go ahead and include them, I can obviously go ahead and include them directly as a style. Uh, so let's just go ahead and actually, first of all, what we have to do, obviously, we have to link the CSS file. So I'm going to say it's going to be in the build folder, then we have the CSS folder, and then we have the variables. So we have that linked. I'm going to go ahead and add a style tag here as well. Let's just go ahead and actually just add a style tag here. Uh, create, just target all of the buttons because we're not doing anything specific right now. And let's just go ahead and see what color we want to add. So we want to add this global primary uh, color which we have in our Figma file as well and I can show that to you here if we go to the inspect so we have this primary p300 so let's just go ahead and add that so I'm going to say the background color of this button is going to be variable and then I'm going to type the variable name in if I save it and let's just try to view this particular button as you can see the button looks great I'm going to remove the border since we don't need the border I'm going to go ahead and add a border radius and let's see what the name of that border radius is. 
radius so it's the default one here we have it let's just go ahead and replace this here as well so we have the border radius now that works as well let's just go ahead and give it a font size normally of 14 pixels because i know that's what the font size is uh, let's just change the color to white color white obviously i just have these three properties linked so i'm not showing everything i'm just going to show the, the properties that i have linked and let's just give it a height as well so i'm going to go ahead and give it a height of height or sorry size so here's the size the medium size that we have that we want to use so again variable and then here we have the size so now we have the size we can also give it a padding if we had it as uh, generated in the variables but since we don't we can just go ahead and give it a manual one so here we have our button now imagine let's say I'm gonna push these changes as well sorry so let's just go ahead and get push origin main sorry git add dot and then let's go ahead and git commit minus m test and then git push origin main so I'm gonna push these changes again to the main branch and these changes are pushed that looks great. Now let's say for some reason a designer comes in and he's like, hey, I don't really like this P300 color. Maybe I want to change it to something else. Maybe I want to change it to yellow. Let's say the designer actually assumes something like that, that he wants this, or maybe the button to be actually purple or something. He goes ahead and updates this. As you can see, that's updated. That looks good. I'm going to go ahead and first pull from GitHub. Uh, it's going to fetch all of the latest changes. And then if I want, I can push these changes. If I pushed if I push these, like first of all, I obviously have to update them. I'm sure I need to go ahead and update them. I'm just gonna go ahead. Since I pulled them, obviously it overrode some of the changes that I was making since the changes were coming from GitHub. Now I can go ahead and push them. So push to GitHub, it's gonna ask me, uh, what do you, why do you wanna push it? So P300 color changed. Let's just go ahead and push this. And I also wanna push something else. Uh, just so I can showcase it to you as well. So imagine I also want to go ahead and say that all of the buttons should be rounded. I don't really like this, let's say, border radius. So maybe all of these should be rounded. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, now I have created another, uh, changed another thing. And you can obviously combine all of these into a single commit. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and say that I have the radius changed as well. Okay, let's just push these. Now that I have these changes pushed, now here it is, here is where the magic happens. I'm gonna go to my VS code. I'm gonna say git pull origin main. I'm gonna get those two commits that I just pushed from the plugin. As you can see, we have those two plugins. I'm gonna go ahead and generate the style build dictionary again. Once I've done that, I'm gonna go, and as you can see, obviously since it's a live test server, it's automatically updating. Those changes are just here without me even doing anything. Isn't that like amazing? And so the most amazing part of this, like even further is actually it works both ways. If now I go to my tokens file and actually let's say go ahead and see obviously this token looks good. Um, okay, so if we go to our tokens file, we can actually go ahead and do these updates directly from the tokens file here. So the border radius is 50 pixels. I don't like it. Maybe it should be eight pixels. And maybe the CEO decides that the height of this button should be 64 instead of 48 or 40. So now that that's done, we can go and we can choose style dictionary and we can build these changes. Once these changes are built, as you can see, the height has been updated and the border radius has been updated. If we want, we can also update the color here as well. I want to say that we don't want this purple color. Maybe we want a black color. I'm going to build it again. And here we have a black and a dark gray color. So now that we have that done, we're just going to go and say git add dot git commit minus m. We're going to commit these changes updating tokens. And once we have these tokens updated and pushed git push origin main, we're going to push it to main so we can pull it in the Figma plugin. We're going to come to our Figma plugin. And we're going to just go ahead and actually kill, click this pull icon. If we pull it, we're going to have the border radius updated. We have the size updated. We're just wanna, we just want to go ahead and click the update button. And here we have the changes that we just pushed from the code. And all of that's just really amazing. So again, a single source of truth. If developers are updating any styles, you can get them in Figma. If you're doing any changes, you can get them. You can obviously pass them to developers. 
Developers don't have to go one by one and actually update all of those styles. You can just go ahead and update the main CSS variables file just by pushing the code from here. So again, that's really awesome. I personally feel like most developers and most designers should start using this to bridge the gap between the design and, de and development cycle, obviously reduce the amount of changes that are needed and just work a lot more smoothly. So that's gonna be pretty much it for this video. Do subscribe, do hit the bell icon and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.